Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today to address a few frequently asked questions about colors breaking, in particular about food coloring breaking. Now when I say that a food coloring color breaks, I mean that we see a mixture of say purple dye break apart into pink and blue. And this is really fun because you mix one color and you see multiple come out on the other end. This breaking happens because different molecules of food coloring or even commercial dyes breaking can happen. But the different dye molecules bind to the fiber at different rates. So if the dye has an uneven access to the yarn at the beginning, whether through dip dyeing or hand painting, some colors might strike to the yarn extremely fast and then others might strike slower, which will give us this gradient of color or breaking of these different hues. Now, in terms of food coloring, there are five food coloring molecules that are used really, really frequently in the US. Red number three, red 40, uh, yellows five and six, and blue number one. Blue number two is used sometimes, but I don't find it as frequently in food coloring mixtures. In general, Red number three strikes really, really fast. I found that I don't need really a lot of acid at all or even very much heat for it to bind to especially superwash yarns. Um, I find that after red number three being the fastest, next we see red 40. Then I'm a little unsure on the order of the yellows. Um, and then finally the blue. So by looking at this, clearly a mixture, you know, since blue is the slowest to absorb, it needs the most time, the most heat, the most acid. Um, the a mixture of blue and red, say a purple, will have the most dramatic breaking. And this is why, you know, we do a lot of breaking of Wilton's Violet on this channel, because you can break this lovely purple color into a bright blue and magenta with the purple tones in between. I find that if you want to have really dramatic color breaking, it's best to start with a low amount of acid because you can let some of the molecules that bind quicker to bind to the yarn first, and then you can add some more acid as needed for the residual blues and yellows to break. Now, some colors you might not necessarily see some breaking. Like orange, it's a little iffy, and the same thing with some greens. Uh, Wilton's Creamy Peach, which I think has one of the yellows and maybe red number three in it um, that has a lot more yellow than red and because of that i think that you do see some breaking in the hue because as the red binds there's so much yellow left over that you're able to see that hue shift but if you had a really red orange you might not might not be able to tell if it's just like a tonal like the a tonal difference of one color getting lighter as you're dipping it or what. And a similar thing with greens. I find that, say, Wilton's teal breaks beautifully from teal to a bright blue. And I think that's because there's so much more blue number one than there is the yellow in that mixture. Um, and so the yellow will bind a bit faster, the yellow sort of exhausts, and that leaves you with the bright blue behind. Whereas a more medium green that maybe has a lot more yellow to it, you might not see the breaking because by the time you start to exhaust the yellow, a lot of the blues have maybe bound as well. So how do you know if you, this particular food coloring color will break? Well, check and see if it has a mixture of different food mo coloring molecules. A lot of orange food coloring isn't really a mixture at all. It's just yellow number six. And so therefore, if it's just one dye molecule, you're not really going to see the colors break because there's really only one thing in there. Now, the same like rules of thumb that like blacks, browns, things with a lot of mixtures in food coloring or, will break doesn't necessarily translate to commercial dyes. Jacquard Violet does not break um, as the acid dye, but there are dyes that do break. And so it's sort of on a case-by-case, brand-by-brand basis, because I think that when it comes to commercial acid dyes, they have a few more than five molecules that they are dealing with 
um, and we don't often know exactly what is in there for the colors and so therefore um, it's not easy to tell straight out whether something breaks you'll have to go through and see what the dyeing community has to say about specific colors and i know that a lot of people have recommendations for say their favorite blacks um, and whatnot but breaking colors is something that can be really really fun to take advantage of because it's just another way to play around with color and again if you want to maximize the breaking with dip dyeing start with a low level of acid and then you can always add more for the rest of the colors to bind. I will put some links to some of my uh, breaking food coloring color videos in the video description. And I really hope that you found this helpful. Don't, for, don't forget to subscribe and give the video a like. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Bye.